Hi everybody, welcome to Citizen Survival Plan. Welcome back if you've been here before. Are your radio preps lacking? Radio is probably the most complicated subject in prepping. It requires its own category just to understand it. In today's video, I'm going to try to make it more simple. We're going to talk about where to start, what to get, where these radios listen, what you can listen to, and if you do not want to become a ham radio operator or a radio nerd, where you can just obtain a radio that's just ready to go. So the first thing you'll probably come across if you type in emergency radio into the internets is you're going to get a emergency radio that's going to advertise it as like a hand crank or something that does FM, AM, and they're going to make a big deal that it listens to NOAA weather. Uh, these are pretty much useless, in my opinion, because you can just get a ham radio that does all that plus way more. There's also FRS radio. Those are the little bubble pack radios that you see at Home Depot and Walmart. They work okay for very short range communications, but they are limited to the channels that come programmed on them. You can't put anything extra into them. You can't really listen to anything extra. Sometimes they come with NOAA, but that's it. They're very limited and they're not that great. The range is not very good on them either. Another place the internet is going to steer you toward is going to be CB radio. CB radio is okay if you're using it for just communications between you and another household. Um, the handhelds on these don't really work that good and that's another reason I like to push people toward a ham radio like a handheld ham radio is with CB because it's an HF band the wavelength is very long on it so your handhelds are basically useless pieces of garbage. CB radio really is only good for listening to only CB radio. Unlike something like this, this can listen to all different kinds of bands. Pretty much in all circumstances, emergency services are going to be on VHF or UHF radio, which this is capable of. CB radio also does not have repeaters. That means you can only talk radio to radio. You can send your signal out on one frequency and or channel, and that's it. You can't tap into repeaters and boost your signal. GMRS and HAM are the only ones that can do repeater access. One thing I want to add really quick is what is a repeater? So a repeater is basically a radio tower that is operating on two different frequencies. The handheld or whatever radio you're using will transmit to the repeater on one frequency. The repeater is going to take it in and just spit it out on another frequency. So repeaters typically sit high up in the mountains or they're on a radio tower or something, something higher up than you are, and they broadcast your signal over a larger area. Anybody with a ham radio or GMRS radio can access either ham or GMRS repeaters and their signal can go much further than you can just transmitting on a simplex channel. Now I want to get around one little misconception with CB radio is you will hear tall tales from boomers and your grandpa about how they talk to other countries off the skip. And all that is is Skywave propagation. We use that all the time in ham radio on HF and CB is HF. But it's kind of an unreliable way to really do communications. It's cool that it has some propagation and it can scatter its signal through the ionosphere and bounce down in random places. And that's where you get your, hey, I talked to another country tail. So now that we've gotten that, information out of the way this is where i want to go with this you should get a gmrs radio or a ham radio this is a big thing i want to bring up before i move any further into this video anybody can get a ham radio program it with all the repeaters anything they want in it emergency services and listen you do not need to be a ham radio operator to hear all of the ham or GMRS or anything. Anything you want to listen to, if you can type it into a UHF, VHF radio, or even if you're listening to HF, it is legal. The only time you need your license 
is when you transmit on those repeaters or frequencies. And another thing that people bring up all the time is in an emergency or in SHTF, the license will not matter. This is a point that I always agree with. I'm a ham radio operator and I have a GMRS license, but I could see where their point is. So if you want to get a radio and program it and listen and just use it in an emergency, it is 100% your choice. The benefit to a GMRS radio is people who are concerned about laws and stuff can get these and they can put ham radio and emergency services and NOAA and stuff in and the radio is basically safety bumpered in a way that you can only transmit GMRS. Um, you can put ham frequencies and channels and repeaters and emergency services into a GMRS radio. You will just never be able to transmit on anything but GMRS. So if you're worried about laws, accidentally bumping the PTT button and transmitting on a ham repeater or something that you are worried about breaking the law, a GMRS radio can do what a ham radio does as far as listening. Okay, so now that's out of the way. Ham and GMRS really do the same thing as far as listening. Ham radios can transmit just in way more places than a GMRS can. So here's what you can listen to if you get a UHF VHF ham radio. You can listen to ham, GMRS, the weather, FM radio, and in a lot of cases you can type in emergency services via radioreference.com. You can search your zip code and county and you can see the frequencies that are in your area that you can listen to. Now a lot of people are going to come on here and say, oh everything's P25 and encrypted and trunked radio and you can't listen to it on a regular old ham radio. That is not necessarily true. <clears throat> I program radios for other people all the time. I have a website where you can even order them. And I type in emergency services all the time. Now, a lot of times I'll agree with them. You can't always listen to the police. In some cases you can, but a lot of times the police is basically trunked or encrypted or it's on a frequency you cannot access with a ham radio. I'm not going to get too deep into why that is and all the encryption and stuff, but you just can't. Um, but a lot of the fire departments and all kinds of other stuff, you, you can listen to prison systems and all, all kinds of weird stuff you can get into with that. So basically doing a basic search on radio reference, and if it's marked NFM or FM, um, you can listen to it basically. If it's marked P25 or DMR or something, you're going to need additional information and additional radios to listen to that stuff. But, but you can get a lot of emergency services into a ham radio, in my opinion. Where you live in your area is going to really determine that. Doing a quick search on radio reference is going to help you decide how much you can listen here. A quick explanation and demo on where and what you're listening to from this radio chart. Let's take a look just real quick. So here on the 70 centimeter portion of this chart, this is where your UHF ham radio is. That You're going to get a lot of repeaters throughout this. And then also up on the 2 meter, a lot of ham radio repeaters are here. Uh, in between the 2 and the 1.25 meter, that's where your 5 channels and MERS is. And, and somewhere in between there, there's a lot of emergency services and other police and other just things you can listen to that's sort of government stuff. Um, if it is not encrypted and it's just on an NFM or FM band, you can listen to it if it's emergency services. And that is where your tri-band or dual band ham radio is going to listen. Right here on this chart, you're going to see all this. And this is typically where a lot of repeaters are and a lot of government frequencies are to listen to. Moving on up, if you had a shortwave radio or something, all that's going to kind of be up here between 3.5 and where um, CB is on the 11 meter band. You're going to listen to a lot of HF stuff. Now, if you buy a shortwave radio and you want to listen to ham or CB or anything, well, not so much CB, but ham. You need to get it with SSB capability, that single sideband. That is where hams talk. They typically use single sideband, either upper or lower, depending on where they are in the band. Um, we can get in that, into that in another video. 
but you need one with SSB capability. Now, I want to listen to ham radio because in an event of emergencies, ham radio towers and their repeaters and even the simplex frequencies are going to be running a lot longer than probably your FM stations or anything else. It also gets you the opportunity to listen to the public and what's going on in your area around you. You know, what are people hearing and what are they saying? The ham radio operators and GMRS channels are going to have a lot of chatter back and forth about this. You're going to hear a lot of stuff on ham and GMRS. Now, here is the big problem with these radios. While they are highly capable and absolutely probably the best radio to have in an emergency, it doesn't come without its downsides. The downsides to this is they can be complicated to program if you don't know what you're doing. And if you're watching this video, and I'm explaining this basic stuff to you, you probably aren't a radio person. Um, so you can do a couple different things to program these. You can go on Chirp, and I have a bunch of videos how to program radios, and there'll be more to come, but you can also just order one from me. I charge $99. It comes with emergency services, all the ham repeaters, all the GMRS that can be programmed into the radio in a 50 or 75 mile range, and you basically pick the radio up, and it's good to go. Or, if you don't want to do that, you can buy another radio for 20 or 30 bucks off Amazon, and you can program it yourself via Chirp. Chirp is a great resource, basically, to get everything you need. You can do searches in Chirp with your GPS coordinates. So you type your GPS coordinates in, and you type in what bands and what you want to look for, and you can search all of that. Or, if you are a GMRS user, you're going to have to go to mygmrs.com, and you'll be able to see all the repeaters on a map that you can type into Chirp, name, and hit program. One final thing I want to talk about in this video for anyone who wants to listen to more than just the UHF and VHF frequencies. If you're not a radio person, this is a great resource to have. This is a shortwave radio, and it lets you listen to everything outside of what your VHF and UHF radio can. So I'll put one on the screen here, and I'll link it below. This is a really cool product that you could just hear all the HF radio frequencies going off. You'll be able to hear people talk all over this. It does all the bands, basically, and it's just a cool thing to have. It's a little bit more expensive than doing a uh, like a handheld walkie like that we sell, but it is an additional thing you can get and listen to. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about anything, put them in the comments below. I will either answer them, or if there's enough of that comment, I will make an actual video explaining the questions that you guys have. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.